Hi guys, uh, my name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. And I will be reviewing for you today the uh, Anet E10 uh, that Gearbest have been nice enough to send me for a review. Okay, so what is in the box? So first of all, we get our E10 manual, which is a, look, a pretty basic manual. Uh, does the job though, so look, can't complain too much there. Uh, the 3M uh, build tack sheet for your bed, some 10 meter PLA rolls. I'll just hand this over to my quality assurance assistant uh, to check uh, if that's okay. Yep, all seems to be in order. Uh, so what is under the phone? What do we get? Let's have a look. So what we're looking at is pretty much a two-piece kit, really. It's just got the uh, entire bed assembly and base, uh, also with the Z-axis separated, uh, which is underneath. You just can't see it very well here. Uh, they do give you a box of goodies as well, which uh, has pretty much everything that you need to get the printer built and going. Uh, there wasn't really anything I needed to grab tool-wise. I did grab some pliers and a few other things to make it easier, but. Uh, look, you can actually build this thing with everything they give you there. Uh, micro SD card, Bowden cables, some spare Allen keys, screwdrivers, you know, not bad. And the, probably the most impressive was a spare hot end nozzle and the throat and the block. So, you, you know, not everyone's going to give you one of those. So, uh, definitely points plus for giving me a spare hot end. Uh, one of the few printers that have actually done that, even, even with the DIY kits, they don't do that. So um, all in all, not bad. And also a print scraper, uh, which also comes in handy, which a lot of people don't do. Um, some do now, but it never was a thing back in the past. So like I said, can't complain, not a bad kit to start off with. Okay, very quickly, I'm just gonna show you this uh, important step. You need to ensure these motors are flush with the bottom of this extrusion. There can't be a gap here like I've got. If there's a gap, the motors will hit the extrusion before the poles can, can actually be locked in. So ensure these are all the way up and, um, and they're flush with the extrusions. Okay, just one small thing you need to be aware of. Um, see how this bearing has actually slipped out of its housing? It's actually bound up on the Z axis and it won't turn and it also won't go up anymore. It's fine, that's how it's meant to look. So uh, take the cap off, there's only two screws, pop the bearing back in and rebuild it. It's not hard. Possibly the most important thing I have to show you, cut this capped on tape down the side, because if you don't, when you try and put this cover on, the mystery is just gonna pop out of the hole, which means you're never gonna get this thing up to temperature because it will never detect its temperature. So it's really important uh, that does not come out. Um, number one, when you get this machine, the Z-axis motors, the, the connectors are facing inwards, not hard to fix. You just take them out and turn them backwards. It's, it's a no brainer. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've given it a pretty good go. Uh, the largest print I've probably popped out of it uh, would be about a 13 hour print, so not not max size, but close to max size. And I printed this at 0.3, so the, the layer quality wasn't fantastic, but it was just, for me, it was just enough to see if it could actually do the job uh, as far as a long print goes. I did print a lot of other small things. The main issues that I had with this machine were cooling really the PLA cooling fan is just non-existent it, it is there but it just doesn't do very much the reason it doesn't do very much is because one the outlet is about one millimeter uh, th th thick and two they've placed it if that's the nozzle they've placed it above the nozzle it really needs to be uh, airflow pointing at the print not at the nozzle anyway so with that plus the actual box they put around the extruder They've created a little tiny, uh, you know, a vortex of air that blows straight down over the hot end. So the problem is that this actually prematurely cools down while you're printing. If you set this to 230, you're lucky if it gets to 205, 208. I've set this to 250 and I couldn't get it past 220. 
Okay, so a quick way to fix the cooling problem. Um, I myself just got a bit of blue tape. Cut a hole in it like so. And I just put it over the hot end like that. Okay, that's a quick fix, all right? That's how long it takes to fix that. The problem is, you fix one problem, but you create another problem. By blocking off the airflow to here, you also let this hot end not cool down very well, which causes clogs and, and swells your filament and things like that. So it's a catch-22. So I would suggest to people either look for some mods for a CR10 or something like this, where it improves the cooling flow. Uh, me personally, I'm gonna redesign a whole new are hot in for this because I think this really needs uh, a bit of improvement. So that being said, yes it does the job but it seriously needs some work. Get one of these because you're going to be undoing this a lot. Um, be aware too they also lock tight this PTFE connector in so the first time you undo it it's very very hard so you've got to sort of snap it open. Um, you won't break it if you're lucky but uh, be prepared to take this out a lot. Maintenance for this machine very little really. Um, belt tension from the front here on the y-axis and for your x-axis just undo these bolts and just slide it across. The downside is they've given us non-reinforced belts, just the rubber stretchy kind. So over time they're going to actually stretch out and there's only so much you can tighten a belt before it's just too loose and you'll have to actually cut it and then rejoin it. So I would suggest getting some good GT2 reinforced belts with the fabric inside because they don't stretch. They might fray a little bit but they don't stretch. So that's a pretty important thing. Um, everything else in it is pretty stock standard. Um, ramps, board, standard power supply, standard sort of NEMA 17 stepper motors, which really, there's, there's nothing about this machine that I can rave is, is unique or you know revolutionary. Um, it does the job, it's a 3D printer. Value for money. So with this machine, what, let's say it's about a $300 machine, um, roughly. There's a lot of other machines you can buy that are just completely ready to go out of the box, like a, a Flash Forge or a CTC or a Zortrax. Um, also a lot more expensive. I mean, a, a Flash Forge is, a, a new Flash Forge creator is about $1,500. Um, the Zortrax, you're looking at about three grand. So it's, there's a big difference. So out of the box, I wouldn't call this, it's not a DIY kit because it's, it's built for you. Everything is done. You just have to plug the plugs in, assemble the uh, Z-axis, and that's pretty much it. If you haven't built a printer before, yes, you might have a few issues because you won't know what to look for when you're actually building this thing or putting it together. So uh, all I can do is suggest to you that you just do it slowly. Um, there's things that you need to make sure are working before you even turn the machine on. You need to make sure that A, your, zip, your Y axis clicks the little end stop at the back when it actually homes to the back. So you can push it back and you can hear that clicking sound. Your z-axis, when that comes down, it needs to be able to click that before it crashes into the bed. Because if it doesn't hit this little switch, guess what? It's just going to keep going and going and going. So really, these are little things that you just need to check before you start your machine up. Now, when you get this machine, the software that comes with it, it comes with um, a little micro SD card and a USB adapter. It also comes with Cura and a profile for Cura. I personally don't use Cura, I use Simplify 3D, so I just made a new profile for this machine based off the ANET A6. So all I did was copy the ANET A6 profile, I changed the dimensions of the machine, and that's pretty much it, and then I played with the retraction. So other than that, it worked pretty well straight off. Um, okay, so look, print quality in different materials. Um, this machine actually performed the best with ABS. Um, I had the, uh, the cleanest prints with ABS. This is a Spider-Man Homecoming goggle set. Um, and to be honest, um, it printed fantastically. Um, tolerance wasn't bad, it's a little bit tight. Um, but look, it was meant to be a snap fit and it snap fit. So I'm pretty happy with the ABS quality of this machine. Um, like I said, PLA cooling, not great. Is it worth the buy? Look. In my experience, yes, because I didn't have really that many problems with it, and no problems that I had weren't able to be fixed within a few minutes. Um, now, I even emailed Gearbest about a few of the issues, and they got back to me within about 10 minutes. So, 
really, I, I can't complain about the actual service from the company. So this is a PLA example, actually turned out pretty well. That's printed at uh, 0.2 millimeters. Um, this one didn't fare so well, only because of the cooling really. Uh, if it had better PLA cooling and a bit of better retraction, it would have been great. And finally the ABS, look, to, to be honest, I was, didn't have a problem with the ABS. I was quite happy, no curling, no warping. It was not too bad. And this was just a small lithopane test, which to be honest, actually came out pretty well besides some retraction issues. Would I recommend this machine? Look, if you've got a budget of $300 to $350 and you want a machine that is pretty easy to repair and to swap parts on, it's not a bad deal, okay? Yes, there are competitors that have a larger volume that are about $100 cheaper. And I think that's where this machine is gonna fall down. Not for the machine itself, but for the fact that they've just put it in the wrong price point. Okay, so, what would we give this a score out of 10? Um, in a few categories, so look, ease of building, I'll give it probably an eight, because it was pretty easy to put together. Um, probably a six if you've never built a machine before, because you'll have a lot more trouble. Um, print quality, out of the box, I would give it probably a six as well out of 10. Uh, lots of room for improvement, especially with PLA. Um, so, I mean, to me personally, if a machine's gonna come out and say, oh, I can print PLA, well, it really needs to do a good job of that. Um, and considering that's probably one of the easiest materials to print in, the fact that it does ABS better than PLA, just really all down to the cooling, is a bit of a down thumbs for me. Um, the actual construction of the machine isn't bad. It's quite solid. Um, they've used, it's got 2020 extrusions all around. But they've used a couple of mice, what looks like to be 4040s on the base here, or 4020, sorry. Um, which just gives it a bit more, you know, it's a bit more solid. But that also means they can also chuck in two restraining bolts on either side on both ends. So the actual frame itself is very solid. Um, it doesn't twist, you know, um, it's pretty important that, you know. So um, I didn't have any problems with my rods, they went bent. So look, all in all, um, Wrapping this up, I'd probably give this about a six and a half out of 10 at the moment. To make it to an eight or a nine, um, you'd have to drop the price point and improve all of the cooling features, the wiring, um, sort out why customers are having issues with the bed knobs hitting these brackets. I'm not, but some other people are. I can't not recommend this printer. Um, it's not a bad printer. It has things that need to be repaired, sure, but so do most printers. And really, if you've never built or used a machine before, you're gonna have teething issues on any machine that you use. So really, um, the fact that there's a few you know, discrepancies with this out of the box, like I said, that are hard to fix, it doesn't make for a bad starter machine. Okay, so look, a quick note, guys, um, the cabling. They mislabeled two of the wires. The extruder and the x-axis for me were swapped over. So when I went to do a homing, um, my extruder started clicking because it was under temperature. And straight away I knew, okay, well I've just got the wrong cables. But I looked at the, the, the actual stickers and they've actually swapped them around the wrong way. So just be aware of that. If you find that you're having issues like that, just swap the cables over. Um, someone just did do a very good job with the stickers. Um, I hope you enjoyed this review. It's my first one, on my first sort of visual review anyway. So I'm sorry if it was a bit boring, but um, uh, thumbs down or a thumbs up if you like it. Um, uh, I might even make some mods for this and I'll post them on Thingiverse or something like that just for other people that have got these. Um, so yeah, so look, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.